My name is Pastor Colette Jones, and you have just tuned in to Living Proof. Living Proof is a show that demonstrates the power and the anointing of God. And what we do, sometimes we have special guests, sometimes we bring forth the word, sometimes we just minister to you, but most of all, Jesus Christ shows up to demonstrate who he is. Amen? I want to welcome you today. Today I'm going to bring a word that has been placed on my spirit that's needed for this year, 2011. And the word is maturity. We need mature Christians to demonstrate who God is. A lot of times we want to remain babies. A lot of times we want to be fed milk. A lot of times we want somebody to hold our hand and walk us through life. But I'm here to tell you today that as God holds your hand through life, people's circumstances, trials, tribulations, they may come our way, but you have to be living proof. You have to demonstrate who God is in your life. You cannot let life take hold of you. You have to take a hold of life and demand that life gives you what God says you can have. Amen? So if you have your Bibles in your homes, or if you don't, I'm going to go out of Hebrews. And we're going to start at 5 and 7. And we'll read a little bit to you. It says, And who in the days of his flesh, when he had offered up prayers and supplications, was strong crying and tears unto him that was able to save him from death, and was heard in that he feared. Though he were a son, yet he learned obedience by the things which he offered. And being made perfect, he became the author of eternal salvation. Unto all men that obeyed him, called of God and high priest after the order of Melchizedek. Let me say that again. After the order of Melchizedek, a high priest. That's who Jesus was like and after. Of whom we have many to say and heard to the other, seeing ye are dull of hearing. How many of us are really dull of hearing? We come to church Sunday after Sunday. We hear what the pastor preaches Sunday after Sunday. But yet and still, we remain on milk. Some of us are, remain on skin milk. That means that, that the, the less milk product there is in the water, the less the church you have, then that's skim milk. Some of us just got 2% milk, and that means that we're only going to get 2% of the milk that's being taught. Then some of us are vitamin D milk. That means that we come and we gather up the milk and we get strengthened by the word, we get strengthened by the milk that's presented, and then we go forth and we try to use it, but something happens, a trial comes, a tribulation comes, something comes to stop you in your tracks. And then there's some of us that say, look, I need a little meat with my milk. So we dig into what is being preached and we say, give me the meat of the word. Give me something I can live by. Give me something that I can take the others and bring them to Christ. Are you on milk or are you on meat? Mature Christians, that's what God is looking for, to bring about this end time harvest. Amen? It says, of whom we have many to say and hard to be uttered, seeing ye are dull of hearing. For when for the time ye ought to be teachers, ye have need that one teach you. Again, be the first principles of the oracles of God, and are become such as have need of milk, and not of strong meat. Some of us have been knowing God 5, 10, 15 years, but yet we are still in our milk stages. And God keeps wanting to feed you meat and keeps wanting you to digest meat, but there's something or somebody that's keeping you from what God has for you. But at the end of the day, God's going to ask you, my daughter, my son, what did you do with my grace? He's not going to ask your mother. He's not going to ask your brother. He's not going to ask your sister or your pastor. But he's going to ask you, what did you do with my grace? Well, God, my mother 
other thought that um, I wasn't ready and, and I just want to hang back and, and, and just be a pew warmer because my mom said I'm not ready yet. What did you do with my grace? Well, God, you know, my sister, she's far more, more anointed than I am, God. And, and, you know, my sister, she sings and, and she gets up in front of people. God's going to say, what did you do with my grace? And what are you going to respond to our God? The people who you let hinder your walk with God are the people who God is going to go before them and ask them the same question he's asking you. So God said, the first principles of the oracles of God, two things manifest Christian maturity. Two things. To have the first principles Cease to remain in a state of babes. Cease to remain in a state of babes. Stop being a babe. There's a time to be a babe. There's a time when, when, when there's conception and then there's birth and then there's a growing process, a growing period. But there comes time when your mother and your father takes you to kindergarten or nowadays preschool and you have to be left there at preschool all day. And they release your hands, and they go on and do what they got to do. And then when you go to first grade, second grade, third grade, but some of you refuse to release the hands of those who have birthed you. In other words, if you're in a ministry that God has assigned you something to do, you should be able to help that pastor, be able to help her or him teach the word of God to others. You should be able to help bring the harvest in. God doesn't really like church hoppers, but God likes people who hop in the church and get the job done. Amen? So if you, if you know that you know that you know you've been called, if you know you've been called to a set ministry, to a set program, you jump in and you do the best you can to help bring in the harvest of God. Every pastor needs help to bring in the harvest. Every church needs laborers. Every church needs mature Christians. The word of God said to cease from being a babe. That means stop it. You're no longer a babe. That means stop it. Get into the word for thyself. Get into the word and eat the word. Be able to digest that meat. Be able to go forth and produce the fruit. Like God said, be fruitful and multiply. Number two, go on to perfection. Go on to perfection. You say, well, pastor, you know, nobody's perfect. Nobody can ever be perfect. But the word of God says, mark the perfect man. And the perfect man is one who keeps going on and on and on. The perfect man is one who never rests until you are an adult, capable of taking strong meat, of being a teacher, of exercising all senses in righteousness. Let me say that again. That's a mouthful. On a mature Christian, or the perfection that God's looking for, is one who never rests until you are an adult, Capable of taking strong meat, of being a teacher. Notice what I said, capable of taking strong meat. Are you able to digest strong meat? Are you able to follow instructions? Are you able to help bring in the harvest? God said the harvest is plants, but the laborers are few. Why are the laborers few? Because you want to be held, because you want to be wrought. Because you want to be held up and, and act like a baby when you should be out there being a laborer. A laborer is one who gets in and gets the job done. A laborer is one who, regardless of who don't show up, regardless of who don't follow the plan, I want to get done what God has prescribed for me to get done. I will be a laborer for Christ. I will be a fool for Christ. I will be ordained, predained, and destined to fulfill what God has called me to do. Amen? If you're out there and you're destined to fulfill purpose, purpose brings about predestination. Preparation brings about purpose. Purpose brings about predestination. And if you're out there and you know that you know that you know 
know that you are no longer a baby, get up and start participating in eating milk. Go to your pastor and say, Pastor, I no longer want to be a pew warmer, but what I want to do, I want to be active in this church. I want to do something to help you, Pastor. I want to be right by your side. I want to let you know, Pastor, that I have abilities on the inside of me that can take this ministry to the next level. I have abilities on the inside of me that help you get where God wants you to go. I have abilities on the inside of me. Just trust me, Pastor. Just give me a chance. And I will do and accomplish what God has set forth for me to do through the leadership of my pastor. God, help me. Let's pray this prayer with me. Father God, forgive me. Lord, I'm sorry that I've just sat for so long. I'm sorry, Father, that I, I kind of disappointed you, Lord. I'm sorry, Lord, that others had persuade me to sit on the word, to sit on my capabilities, to sit on my abilities. But today, Father God, this day I am determined to go forth to perfection. I am determined to be what you call me to be. I am determined, oh God, to preordain and be ordained by you to go forward. And I won't stop. The word says I won't rest until I complete what you have called me to do. And now, Father, anoint me. Anoint me to be all that you want me to be. Now what I want you to do is get up and fulfill. Get up and accomplish. Get up and do what God has called you to do. Now, our first principle was to remain, cease to remain in the state of a babe. Cease, that means stop. Cease to remain in the state of the bed. Our second principle is to go on to perfection. Never rest until you are an adult. Don't rest with what you've got on the inside of you until you are an adult. And then when you're an adult, adult gets out of his mama's home, pays their own bills, takes care of their own family, an adult makes sure that their bills are paid on time. What does an adult do? That's the same way in the body of Christ, what an adult does. If you're an adult, mature Christian in the body of Christ, you're going to be there to assist those who are in leadership of you. If you're an adult Christian, you're going to be able to bring forth the harvest. Amen? Now, strongly, able to take strongly, being a teacher of exercising all senses of righteousness. Go on to be born along as a ship driven by a wind. A ship driven by a wind. You know what that means? That means that ship is being driven by the wind. And when the ship is being driven by the wind, there's no telling where the wind will take it. Hallelujah. I like that. No telling where the wind's going to take you. When you be out in the windy weather and you're, and you're trying to stay afloat, but the wind just keeps moving you. And moving you to the left, to the right. And then the wind just keeps moving you until your destination is where the Holy Spirit wants you to be. Father God, move me by your wind. Move me by your breath. Move me by your spirit. God, it's only my purpose and, and plan to be called and ordained of you, to be in fellowship with you, O oh God. Lord, let me know when I'm, I'm moving out of the order and the plan of you, Father. Father, let me know, O oh God, that I'm writing your will, writing your plan. Lord, here is the spirit, it's the power that moves the believer forward. The spirit of God is the power that moves the believer forward. Let's go forward in God. Let's be all that we can be in Christ Jesus. Let's do what God has called us to do. Amen. When I was a babe in Christ, all my pastor had to say was, jump. And I said, oh. All my pastor had to say.
said was, give me a glass of water. And I continued to bring glasses of water until he said, that's enough. That's enough. If you give a prophet a glass of water, you'll receive a prophet's reward. And now today, that I am a pastor myself, I have traveled several countries. I have ministered to thousands of people. And I know it's all because obedience to my pastor. So that's what we need this day. We need to find a good church home. We need to be obedient to our pastor and obedient to the Lord. Amen? Let the wind move you. Let the wind of God move you in the direction that he wants you to move. I thank you for tuning in today. I don't know about you, but I enjoy myself. And I pray that you've learned something about being led by the Spirit of God. That we no longer obey drinking milk, but we have moved into eating meat, the meat of the Word. And the meat of the Word is, I'm going to lay hands on the sick and I'm going to see them recover. The meat of the Word is being obedient to those in authority of you. That's the meat of the Word. The meat of the word is I'm going to keep going and keep going and keep going until God gets what God wants to get out of my life. My life belongs to you, O oh Lord, and my strength, I rely in you. Thank you for tuning in, Living Proof. My name is Pastor Claude Jones, many known by Pastor C. And we have services Sunday 11, Wednesday at 7. And if you are out there and know that you need a Savior, you just repeat this prayer to me. Father God, I love you. Lord, it's my desire to serve you with all my heart, with all my soul, and with all my mind. And God, this day I dedicate my life to you. Father, I will serve you regardless. If trials come, I'm going to serve you. Tribulations come, I'm going to serve you. If deception come, I'm going to serve you. If sickness come, I'm going to serve you. God, whatever it takes, I'm going to accomplish the goal that you have set forth for me to do. The reason why I was born, and Jeremiah said, before I was born, before I was born to my mother's womb, you knew me. God, you knew me before my mother. You knew me before my father. You knew me before my sister, my brother, my husband, my wife. So if you knew me before all of them, how can I not serve you? Thank you, Lord. Thank you for tuning in. For this is the day that the Lord has made. And we will rejoice and be glad in it. And remember, our lives are living proof.